Hello and welcome to First Time Novelist, a podcast for the novice novelist. In this episode, I am going to talk about how I got started. We're also going to talk about who I am, a little bit of background about my novel, so you have some context, how I picked a structure, point of view, a tense to write in, how I compiled some ideas early in the process, and I might offer a little bit of advice. But first, these are my experiences and are not a guideline or rule book for others to follow or copy, just my personal thoughts and should be enjoyed as entertainment and enlightenment. Any advice I offer is born from my own journey and may or may not apply to anyone else's journey. Enjoy the podcast. My name is Bob Walters. I live in Los Angeles where I have done a little bit of everything from acting to filmmaking, and that includes some stage and screen, both in front of the camera and behind, both on stage and behind uh, the scenes in theater. And I'm also a screenwriter. So these are a couple of uh, screenwriting projects that I've been involved in. And these are a whole bunch of theater projects that I have written. Um, I taught for a long, long time, and we were in a very poor program that we couldn't afford uh, to rent uh, manuscripts. So we ended up writing for many, many years. And the reason this is important when it comes to novel writing for me was because I already had a background in some sort of structured writing in long form. I've written screenplays. This one was an early one I did. And I've written plays, full productions that, you know, ran 90 minutes. So I had a background in researching and structuring and character development and dialogue. And then I got to my novel. I decided at a certain age of my life that I was going to, you know, finally just lay it down and quit talking about it and start doing it. So a little bit about my novel. It's about a struggling L.A. writer Bob Brookmont, who finally sees his screenplay turning into an honest-to-goodness film when his dad suddenly falls ill back in his hometown of Hadley, and he must choose between living out his filmmaking dream in L.A. or going home to be with his father. But is it possible for him to do both? Well, obviously, it's a little bit autobiographical, um, but it is a complete work of fiction. And that gives you a little bit of background as I talk about structure and point of view and some ideas. How I chose a structure really just goes back to freshman English class, the hero's journey. I already knew the hero's journey from years and years of college and graduate school. But then I also knew screenplay structure, which the hero's journey as well. And I knew all this. These were inherent in my writing skills before I even got to writing a novel. So how did I choose a structure? Well, if you look at the second line there, the romantic lead pursues goals and tantalizes hero. I chose the hero's journey structure, literally just broke it down into parts and underlined it and threw it inside of my chapter headings. And I just followed it. Chapter eight, bad guy does something vile to get the upper hand. Chapter nine, bad guy has new plans worse than before. But you're saying to yourself, well, your novel doesn't sound very thriller-ish or mystery-ish. And you're right, it's not. So the bad guy lays new plans, for me, was very, very subtle. And my novel is very much not high drama. But I still have a bad guy, and the bad guy still lays new plans in Chapter 9. So I was very faithful to following my structure. For the ending, chapter 12, bad guy gets the upper hand, reveals his plan and disasters at the end of the chapter and an ultimate ruin for our hero. I really, really did follow the structure. One of the things that was told to me in screenwriting in graduate school was that your house might have beautiful walls and trims and a gorgeous roof, but all of the houses are going to fall down if they don't have a cement foundation. And the structure was my foundation. One of the things I learned very early on in my research process is the idea of spinning plates. And I use this in my mentality when I'm writing. How many plates, how many pieces of drama are spinning in my novel at any given time? And the more plates you spin, the more uh, the audience is going to latch on to a character and try to overcome you know, each dilemma. 
Now, my dilemmas in my novel, it's about filmmaking, are subtle. They're not overt. Like I said, it's not a murder mystery. But I do have a lot of emotional plates spinning, as well as some timeline plates spinning. I taught myself all this. Uh, average length of scenes, total word counts, total numbers of scenes. But that's not what this podcast is about, really. Because um, you can learn all this by doing a quick Google search. And I did do all of this when I was you know, starting off my novel. I really just took my own structure and here's my part of my structure here and just did it. Like I just started writing down words um, and followed that structure inherently. And I came up with all my chapter titles early on and I slugged in some things underneath each chapter, which I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. So I had a, a sense of where my novel was going. Did I outline anything? No. I did it this way. Once I picked my structure, I moved on to point of view and tense. Well, I came from screenwriting, and screenwriting is first person present tense. A gunshot echoes. Jimmy flies backward, blood squirting out of his chest. I knew first person was how I learned to write. A spiral of roads circle the hilltop, two rows of massive sleeping tents. Everything in screenwriting is super, super short. Well, that does not work for a novel. Novels are about elongated passages that have gr great details in writing. But then when I thought about my story being about filmmaking, I thought, well, why can't I do first person present tense? My opening, I am a middle child. Both of my parents are middle children and I am the middle child of two middle children. And it was easy for me. So I really did choose present tense first person. But anybody who has read novels knows that first person present tense is really, really hard. Because if it doesn't happen in front of your main character, you cannot write about it. <laughs> right? So you're very limited into the types of scenes that you can put together into your novel. Because... You can't just cut away to another scene thousands of miles away or in a different room because that character, uh, your main character, your hero character, isn't going to be there to see it. That's what I chose for my point of view in tense. How did I compile ideas? Well, I was blogging before blogs were blogs. Um, I did these mass emails when I moved to L.A. that that had these great little stories about, you know, in this case, my, uh, one of my films back in 2002. Um, uh, this is a blog kind of, I did for my friend Richie who died. And after many years of doing these blogs, I actually had 55 single spaced pages of material that were these stories of shooting these amazing, cool things in LA meeting friends and working on sets. And people said to me, you know, you really should turn these into something. And that's how the idea of Hadley, my novel, started. But then, even with 55 pages of single spaced, I still needed other ideas that were just words. I took a notebook and was riding around the metro and just wrote stuff down uh, for instance, even the homeless guys in the valley have great bodies. I just love that line. Um, I wish I had as curly hair as that guy. I've never seen a Mexican with an afro before. And these were just little things from my life that I thought might make it into my novel, might make it into some uh, idea that I had already embedded into my structure. You know what you don't have in LA? Fat people. That's my five-year-old nephew <laughs> on his first visit. I literally compiled my ideas for like almost two years and then I put numbers to them. So if you remember my structure, I already had kind of a structure set up that was 12 chapters and I just started applying numbers to these ideas that I had. And then if you look here, my chapter eight, this is an early version of it where the bad guy does something vile to get the upper hand and I have two ideas right there. One of them is I inherited several things from my dad. Perfect eyesight and the ability to drink copious amounts of coffee right before going to bed. Chapter 8 is about a funeral. 
And I knew that that literal line of dialogue or thought was going to be perfect for chapter eight. Didn't always work out that way, but that's that's what I did to make sure that I had content for chapter eight. Now, for the first time novelists out there, any advice I can give? Well, it's simple. Writing a novel is not a sprint or even a marathon. Uh, those are finished in a single day. Writing a novel is like running a cross-country foot race that takes months and years. And you gotta prepare yourself physically and emotionally to run that long race. So there it is, episode one. A little bit about how I got started in that process. If you're joining us for episode two, I talk a little bit about the body of work and, and how I come up with ideas and chapters, how I manage my word count, how I do dialogue versus exposition, and how I manage my clock and calendar. But until then, thank you for watching. The First Time Novelist, I'm Bob Walters. Thank you for listening.